When he came around the side, he saw the back door was open, like someone had left it that way in a hurry. He climbed the step and looked inside. He hollered for Lamb, but there was no answer. He didn't see him anywhere. The hall was filling with black smoke, spread a little thicker and darker toward the ceiling. He hollered again, Lamb! Lamb! But the only sound was a steady scratching noise, like there was a herd of mice scurrying inside the walls. He knew Lamb must have run in there, the way dogs do sometimes when people are in trouble. And there had to be someone in trouble. He knew someone had rung that church bell and only stopped a minute ago. Now his dog was in there too. He stepped back and looked down toward the road. Nobody there. And then over his shoulder past the big mower shed and the trees even though he knew the nearest house was a good quarter mile in the other direction. Dang it, Lamb, he said. He had a vision of his grandma's face, wrenched in horror. He stepped inside. The door opened on a tight, wood-paneled hall, pictures hanging in frames. A large brown spider fled over them in panic, looking for a way out. The walls and ceiling crackled. He hollered again. No one answered. He walked on. The hallway opened on an empty office room, then another. He saw flames snaking up the wall behind a desk, twisting loose like a rope. The air was so thick he could hardly breathe, and he started to feel the heat rolling in waves, pushing him back toward the door. He leaned into it like a gust of wind. Then the building gave a loud crack. It sounded like the roof timbers were splitting apart. He tried calling out again, but his voice choked up, and then he came to the end of the hall and practically ran into him. An old man was sitting at the bottom of a little stairwell with his head in his hands. Mister, Elvin said, breathing through his t-shirt, but the man didn't seem to notice him. Come on, get up. The man raised his head a little and his left eye came open. He looked a few years past 70, his arms still wiry and strong. His eye watched Elvin with indifference and then it rolled away. I ain't waiting on you, he said. Elvin coughed into his shirt. He didn't understand what the old man had said, or the tired tone of it, like he was telling him to get lost. There's a fire, mister. The man laughed, sudden and strange. Elvin waited another moment. It started to dawn on him that he might have to drag the man out of there. When he comes, he'll come in fire, the man said.